Uh, starting from the highest sort of level, uh, I'd like to point out the importance of policy certainty, something which is lacking in, in some of the important countries that I know the, the policy agenda changing mm -hmm. uh, all too frequently, perhaps, and that it, that is, uh, so is damaging in, 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 in different ways in terms of investment and, uh, and, 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 and trust into sort of the op policy objectives that that are set, how realistic so they are, and uh, sometimes the, 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 so the response to that by other actors in the, in the energy sector is to wait and see what happens because they cannot quite uh, trust in what, uh, what they are told at a uh, given time. So policy certainty is, uh, is very important and we really need some of it. And, and probably it's pro the best way to put it is perhaps to say, if it would be a way in some of the major sort of countries to take the politics out of the energy policy, and so it, it will allow the country to have a sort of strategic sort of energy policy, something thought for the long term and stay with the stability. Uh, that, uh, that is one uh, Im importance of overriding issue. The other one is the innovation policy and technological uh, progress. Uh, uh, some um, progress has been made in the in, in and, and, and is being made uh, uh, currently, but the question is, you know, how to sort of to, to direct them, how to de decide to create the right kind of sort of ecology for for innovative activities in, in, in the energy sector, so the right type of actors do the right kind of um, technological progress and uh, and R and D. And then what follows from that, in another uh, sort of important issue, is uh, one of the challenges that we have is that we are actually making technological progress in various fronts, but one of the important things for the future is going to be how we connect these technologies and how we simplify them, because some of them are meant to be used by consumers and customers. And so, so simplifying, uh, having the user in, in, in mind is going to be a big challenge. The same thing that happened with personal computers. Uh, they took off after they were s simple enough for, uh, for the mass consumers to, to use them. Uh, and then uh, I think the, the last policy issue I can think of is the getting the sort of message across again to consumers and, and, and customers. We're still uh, the Policy makers, sometimes they mix the, up uh, the sort of the two different sort of aspects of energy users, which is a customer and, and is the citizen. As customer, we are in the marketplace for energy and we look for a good deal and a good contract and so on. But as a citizen, we also have ideas about how policy makers should behave, how other people in the economy should behave in terms of sustainability, climate change, uh, and so on. And policies and technologies and instruments to guide people in uh, the cons their consumption in, the, in, in certain directions, they should differentiate between these. Sometimes we see that policymakers get it wrong. They are talking to the customer side of us, but uh, we are listening as citizens. And sometimes they, talk, they try to talk to us as citizens, but we are actually behaving like customers in the marketplace. So that is going to be important in the coming years. I don't think we will see major changes. Uh, we, we, we can distinguish perhaps between short term and long term. In, in the short term, there are not really any worrying signs as such, unless something drastic happens. If it's business as usual in the marketplace and so on, I don't think that anything drastic will happen. The, um, one important uh, issue for the UK is the interconnectors with, with Europe. I, I recall that uh, na uh, right after the referendum results were known, National Grid was among the very first companies in the UK who came out and said the government should make sure in Brexit negotiations that we have s good sectoral agreements with the, with the EU on energy trade. Otherwise, this will, we will be in a disadvantaged position. So it is, 
important for the energy sector and at least or at least parts of the energy sector but uh, on, on on the whole energy trade with the eu is not the volume is not very very large but it is another source of competition that sort of m probably helps keeping prices lower than they probably would have been so at times of shortages and some uh, shortages at peak time and and so on not having an interconnector i think we will have it anyway but even if we didn't have it, um, not having that small amount of trade, it can lead to some short-term price spikes uh, from time to time. But in the long run, that is the more important issue. The, in the long run uh, is the uh, question of what we, the UK government would do. Some of the sort of early signs is that we are looking into promoting energy efficiency more aggressively and more ambitiously. Um, that is... Um, we, we will have to see how much it can be achieved, but that will be Im important in terms of securing uh, energy energy security, especially. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, beyond that, uh, it is likely that we see even more importance in the gas, in gas supplies to the to the UK and and gas supplies, in a, in, a, in a sort of broad sense, uh, it could translate into expanding the gas storage capacity, which is currently fairly low, uh, is to bring it up with uh, countries like, uh, to the level of uh, other countries like Germany and, and, and so on. That will be one aspect of it. Then it would be perhaps more capacity in, in terms of LNG facilities for receiving LNG. It could be, again, having a fresh look at um, shale gas potential in the UK and so on. So gas will become more important in the broadest sense, everything that goes with it. But I, I, I also like to add one more uh, point. Uh, one implication of if there is a um, sort of, if Brexit means that UK is completely out of the EU energy policy making, one implication that is not very much talked about is that uh, UK has always been an advocate of more market and competition in the EU. So if you take UK out of the equation, we, are, we might begin to see less drive for market and competition in the EU and more tendencies towards regulation and intervention and, and, and so on. So it, it might, we, some people would say this would be a loss to, to both sides, actually, as, uh, if that happens. At the moment, they are, but we also need to realize that uh, they are also followed fairly closely with uh, other priorities, such as security of supply and affordability, increasingly an issue in uh, in increasing number of European countries. And also, we shouldn't forget um, developing countries. There, they still have very major challenges. Access to energy is still a pressing issue there. So um, right now, uh, environmental issues are driving, perhaps, but uh, that can change. If there is a, in, there are major international crises, security of supply can come on top of the list. If the um, if there are shortages of electricity and so on, and then another issue is that in terms of affordability, we have become accustomed to having low interest rates for a good number of years. If you imagine a, wo a world with very high interest rates, renewables are capital intensive, they will become a lot more expensive than they currently are. Um, affordability will be affected. In developing countries, increasing percentages of population living in urban areas, in large cities. Large cities have local air pollution, issues that are more pressing than climate change, to them at least, there and then. There will be demand for local and regional action there. So uh, at the moment, yes, environmental issues in the sense of climate change, but it's not granted that we will always stay like that.